Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. You get to look at my sexy mug from now on. Maybe. Tell me what you think. I'm going to add the facial cam. That sounds awkward. And uh, see how things go. Maybe I'll keep it. Maybe I won't. The only disadvantage I can see to this possibly is that uh, I won't be able to cast in my boxers anymore. But hopefully it will add a little bit and maybe we'll get some interesting comments on it if nothing else. The map today is Gap of Rohan 5 versus 5. Now this is because this is the only game that I had submitted in the last week, believe it or not. Um, people have not been sending me replays, so I'm going to cast this one and then go on a hunt for my own replays. And uh, we'll see what I come up with, but it would be extremely helpful if you guys could send me some games to cast. I always love casting games that people send me because usually uh, people are a pretty good judge of whether or not there's interesting things happening in the game and I don't just have to blindly watch a bunch of replays. So. If you could do that for me, that would be fantastic. It would make things much better for everyone all around. And until then, I will cast this game. Let's jump in and see who these guys are. Relatively noob-ish game. There are a couple of people in here over a thousand and it is relatively well balanced. But on the right hand side, we have Akagi taking Cybern in brilliant luscious purple, followed by Corporal Clinger also taking Cybern. A lot of Cybern in this game, it looks like. We've got Aeon in the south for Chan Chan, and then a Seraphim player that is General Joe, and then Damialni taking orange with UEF. So all four factions representative. Over there. On the left hand side, we've got Dasigen, that is Aeon in Crimson, followed by Supcom. I approve of this name, Supcom32, SPCOM, I'm assuming that's what uh, SP stands for, is Cybrin. And then we've got Non Zero taking UEF, followed by Skull Razor, also UEF, and a third UEF to round it out for Sarek. Now it looks like we've got three ACUs from both sides running to mid, and then we've got top and bottom eco player. So this is pretty much an all around normal five versus five sentence. And I'm saying normal, even though I've only played the grand total of maybe three games on this map. So I'm just kind of assuming here. It does seem like a good meta because then you, uh, well, these guys would take a long time to run to front anyway. So it's not that huge of a deal. We've got an early lab on the southern side. Some aggression on Settens. When was the last, or not Settens, Gap of Rohan. Why am I doing this to myself? When was the last time you saw early aggression on Gap of Rohan other than the ACUs? These guys are going to fight over the mass in the middle. It can make a pretty big difference in the game, but uh, kind of depends on the game. I'm sure you guys remember the cast that I did recently where he basically just suicided everyone in the middle. And that could be quite hysterical, but I don't think it'll happen this game. Got people colliding in the middle. Factory laid down to screw up pathfinding. That can be quite hysterical if done properly. And it looks like we've got a tank coming in for backup. A lonely Aurora coming in to assist this flare. The flare may actually get the mech's kill though before that happens. We've got a scout chasing down an engineer and we're building up some mech marines on the left hand side over here that will eventually come in to assassinate these units as speedily as they possibly can. Got wall sections going down over here. That seems like a tremendous waste. Why would you build that many wall sections? All it takes is one engineer to reclaim them and you have units in your base. Better to build a couple of tanks and deal with the threat. Got flares headed over up there and it looks like the slug match in the center has stopped for now. Ah, there go the McMarines chasing down that flimsy Aurora with its measly 140 HP. It's going to die very easily and we've got another little task force coming across, but I don't think it's going to accomplish much because we do have some strikers and more labs down there. Got air coming out that is going to zip across here and scout out what may be coming. Land factory going down probably for engineers. Well, land scout actually. What's coming second? More land scouts. He decided that he needs radar coverage. Got T1 bombers. Pretty common choice for harassment. And apparently he built a land factory just to build... T1 scouts. Not a very mass efficient uh, plan there, bud. Unless you build something else with that. Getting an upgrade. That would be the T2 upgrade. And bombers moving in. Alrighty then. Looks like we've kind of settled into a pattern here. 
got a little bit of air from yellow and a great quantity of tanks and mech marines. <laughs> and he's going to go ahead and let that Aurora slip on by. No big deal. It's headed towards blue base. I don't need to deal with that. That's his problem now. Got some more land factories going up. Double air right there. And an entire Tech 1 point defense built just for these tanks. I would reclaim that point defense if I were you, bud. That would be an excellent reuse of that mass. Let's see. Heard a bomber right up here. We got red units moving in, a single artillery trying to flay that point defense. Probably will not be successful before that bomber comes over, but the bomber is down now. One Aurora alive. Some reason, Aurora is being used for aggressor units. Not the best tactic ever. I'd love to do T2 drops on this map. T2 drops are the best. You can drop some tanks back here, possibly your ACU, outbuild your opponent, and just wipe them off the face of the earth, and it gets quite hilarious because then all four of the other players, or all three if you're in four versus four, or Gap of Rohan, will team up on you, and then you take the entire focus of the game away from your three teammates who can then tech up as much as they want to without any fear of retribution. Works beautifully. You should try it sometime. Drops are the bomb. Pun intended. Alrighty. Hardcore teching of the mechs is going on. It's almost like I am watching Sentence. Perhaps that's why subconsciously I'm swapping the names. Anti-air here, doing work. Got a Tech 2 Engineer down here, Tech 2 Power going up. We've got a grid of power generators. That is a very odd choice. Uh, no. Some of these guys are a little bit more on the low rank side, but by the time you build that many T1 P gens, you should have just gone for a T2 P gen because the uh, higher tech P gens are more efficient mass to power production. So it is better to build enough T1 power generators to get you to T2, build a T2 generator, and then while you're building your second T2 generator, reclaim all your T1 generators. And then you can kind of step up like that. If you get three or four T2 gens and go RAS, you can reclaim your T2 gens, or when you build your first T3 power, you can reclaim two of your T1 T2 gens, and keep going on like that. And Jester Aggression. Not the best plan ever to directly attack all of this anti-air. We've got one down, the other getting hammered, and it may actually succeed. 120 health and ticking down. Got one more anti-air over here. Can't believe that that actually succeeded. I thought both of those were going to drop. But, Jesters have a fairly large amount of health for only being a Tech 1 air unit. It's very nice, and that is actually a veterancy on that thing. A vetted Jester in a gap game. Well, wonders never cease. And these are rapidly going to get cleaned up. T2 Engineer coming in to help out. Not sure what his plan is, but he is going to reclaim and then... Oh! Oh, I thought I was going to survive on t uh, 2 health. That is so depressing. Why? Why did you have to die? That was all set up to be an epic moment. Um, so many Engineers. Gray is lifting reclaim off of his teammate. Which I guess is understandable because these guys really don't have as many trees of their own, but still it's annoying as all get out when other people's engineers are in your base. It's just like an invasion of privacy. People all up in your space and you just like, yeah, go away. And ACU taking has begun. I'm going to go ahead and bump up the speed on this, guys, because Gap of Royan is turtle hell, as we all know. T2 gunships massing in the bottom. Oh, quick note, while I am watching this game scroll by, um, if any of you guys have had sound issues, and by sound issues I mean sounds missing from the mix that you think should be there, or if you've gotten a crash with the error code um, failure something 3DX apply, ooh, tech launches, I see little yellow dots. 
flying towards the Tech 2 mechs, and this is the most terrible feeling on the face of planet Earth. I would have tacked missile disc P-Gens first. Because if you can nail those P-Gens, the, the other player is in for a world of hurt. And there is a tack defense right there to cover that. Beautifully done. And Tech 1 units moving in on the southern side to see how this develops here because there's a whole lot of units there and they gotta fit through an itty bitty teeny tiny gap not sure how that's gonna work out for them and I think tack defense is mostly up for this team so that tack launch is not going to succeed okay so if you're having sound errors and or sounds missing what you need to do is you need to go to your windows sound options and you need to change from surround sound to stereo because I just found out a couple of days ago, Supreme Commander does not support stereo sound, or, or does not support surround sound. So if you have it on surround sound on some people's computers, the center channel will be ignored. It will only play left and right as you're playing subcom. So the announcer voices, a lot of the sound effects, um, all of that stuff is just lost because it's center channel and it just doesn't play. So that is something that you can use to fix that problem, and it is a beautiful thing. I now have all of my audio playing again, and I can hear when people launch nukes at me, which was my main problem before because I didn't know when people were launching nukes, and sometimes I would just stand there and take a nuke to the face because nobody bothered to say, oh no, nuke incoming. Well, the announcer did, but I was not there to hear it. Anyway, Severe amount of turtle going on here, building lots of flak, lots of TMD. Bump this back up to four because I don't see anything on the near horizon. We have a T2 point defense up here, which is kind of a ridiculous choice because as you can see, it is just going to fire into the mountainside. Should have built it up higher, like a lot higher. I don't, honestly, I don't think it would have been any good anywhere you placed it because T2 point defense do not do well on rough terrain. Got a whole lot of mobile missile launchers hammering down on this base. Already eliminated a point defense, doing great harm to those shields. Got some rhinos moving in, gonna zap that last one. Looks like the gunships are finally on the move. T2 bombers moving in, actually trying to use their anti-air to drop a Janus. And this is going to get by, and there is no anti-air in the back. There are a couple of gunships, and there's a T2 factory here. If he was to build a mobile flak, that would help him greatly. Ah, there are a couple of T1. Here they come, and direct target on the ACU. Build flak, my good sir. Build flak, that is your only chance, but unfortunately, I think it is actually too late. There are enough gunships there to do great harm very quickly. And he's gone, taking the entire air force with him. Why would you leave your interceptors in the nuke blast? I do not know. But what will be will be. All right, T2 gunship snipe. Yay. <laughs> oh, that was a very unoriginal death to say the least. Damiani has pulled T3 air. He is the only person that's got it. And there, oh, nope, there's a T3 up here. Still building Swift Winds, though, for some reason. So we do have competition in T3 air. I think with all of the Swift Winds, red is actually on even footing with orange. So no worries there. Strap Bomber will get shot down if it gets launched. And we have tanks moving down. Need to dispatch some engineers ASAP. There's a lot of reclaim down here with which you could throw down a T4 pretty much instantly. That would be a great help to your team at the moment, but no, we're going to continue building T3 power and drones because turtle, that's why. Bump the speed back up a little bit. We're gonna watch this fly by in fast motion. It's almost like I'm doing a speed run again. Teching, teching, teching to T3 mexes. Someone needs to write a song about this. There's already a song for Waiting on a Woman. Someone should write Waiting on a Mass Extractor. It would make a very good parody. 
T3 mobile artillery on the field. The trebuchets, I do dearly love those units. And it is going to start raining fire and brimstone in the general vicinity of these units anyway. You can see the horrible accuracy of the T3 mobile artillery, at least the Cybrans. Cybern is not known for its point precision accuracy. It's a very odd terminology. All right, engineers in the south in mass. Building T2 mass extractors first. I guess that's totally cool. Um, Efficiency-wise, you should technically build... Ah. We do have T2 bombers coming in. Broadswords, another unit that I love. I love broadswords. Cleaning up all of this spam with those Corsairs. And I was wrong. There are not enough ASF on the left-hand side to actually pull off denial of air combat units which is kind of depressing oh well and that tack launcher is going to keep firing despite the fact that there is plentiful TMD we've got a lift down here is that an SACU? I think so yes there is a quantum gateway that is going to drop right there right in the middle of all those units should be more than enough to deal with those pillars and then if he can start a base down here that would be amazing he's going to drop and proceed to yes melt the face off of all those pillars that is a Rambo's preset that's what I was waiting to see the Rambo comms for UEF are brutally effective Got two T3 engineers dropped over here. Their only hope is to build some point defense, but I dare say even that is not going to be enough. This Rambo Com can pretty much walk all the way across here unimpeded. There is nothing that can be thrown at it right here with all of this T2 and T1 that would worry it. Got another T3 air factory over here. Under heavy assistance, building broadswords. You guys need more ASF. That's what you need. We've got two players building ASF on the right and one person amassing Corsairs and Whalers. So we're actually seeing a lot of air aggression. That is something that I have not seen on Gap of Rohan before. Got some restorers. Typically you see a rush to T4 and then a horrendous amount of spam. <clears throat> not airplay like we're seeing here today. Whalers guarding the ridge. Nicely done. What? What? Someone disconnected. And there's a megalith, kind of halfway built there. Oh! Well, now it's even on the south side. <laughs> if nothing else, that will uh, take away a small bit of the advantage that the right side team has, but this megalith is going to continue to be a problem. We do have Rambo presets being built on the left side, along with a couple of, yes, a couple of T3 mobile artillery over there. Had a tax night being worked up here that is going to be dealt with very swiftly with these broadswords. And Rambo Com still reigns supreme. He's going to throw down some shielding and proceed to go about his business. We got T3 point defense going up on the front. That is not going to be a great deal of help versus a megalith. But there's a monkey lord. Maybe there is some good micro in store for that monkey lord and it will be able to take the megalith, although somehow I doubt it. Maybe between the monkey lord and the T3 point defense, the megalith can be dealt with. Although we do have a Yathatha down here. I'm wondering how on earth the left-hand team is going to survive a push like that. T3 point defense going down in the base. That may actually be enough to deal with that Rambo comm, especially since we have a Rambo comm coming down as well. Shields going down willy-nilly. And yes, T3 point defense connecting. Gunships going to snipe that thing off, and that is the end of that problem. However, the problem has shifted to the north. <clears throat> Megalith is going to calmly proceed towards this base. I'm going to totally avoid all of the T3 point. Nope, it's in range. 
Thought it was going to try to kite, but it is not. Gunships coming in. Monkey Lord reaching range. You need to walk around. The Megalith has a slower turning speed than the Monkey Lord does. So you can actually run around the back end and run in a very, very tiny circle around the Megalith with your Monkey Lord and kill it. But apparently no one wanted to do that. T3 point defense for the win. That Yathotha is going to... Well, no, some of the T3 point defense is aimed at the Megalith. Ah, which one should be targeted? That is the question. This Yathotha is going to kamikaze this base and it's not going to end well. Megalith shedding health, but that monstrous 110,000 is just so much to deal with. It is a tanky son of a gun. But there are a couple of loyalists. Strategic I wonder. Launch detected. Oh, a nuke! What do you know? Oh, that's bad. Well, I don't think it's gonna. Well, no, I think. Uh, I think. Yeah, that's gonna peg the ACU, I think. It's a race! Can he escape it? And connection! ACU is toasty fried. Nuclear annihilation. Do ACUs go to heaven? I don't know. Um, yeah, that's going to eliminate Gray, which means this chicken is going to die. So that ends the T4 push. This Megalith is going to go down. So that's one of the air players and the main producer of T4s. So we have three versus four. This is actually not looking so hot for the right-hand team now. I thought that they did have it in the bag, but it's not looking quite so good now. What I was going to say earlier is, it would be really, really funny if there was a bunch of T3 mobile anti-air that got underneath the Megalith, and then the enemy flew over the top of the Megalith, and when the mobile anti-air fired at the planes, it destroyed the Megalith. That would be very, very funny. But then I remembered that actually the Cybern anti-air has a toggle on it to where it can ground fire. So. Yeah, no big deal. This is an awesome looking unit, by the way. I think we should all just take a moment to appreciate the spectacular form of this. Someone created that and added it to the game. I do not know who the modeler was, but it fits brilliantly into the cyber and scheme of things. And uh, I do love well-fitting units. Let's take a look around here. Is there another Factions T3? I like the UEFs as well. The UEF one looks pretty cool. Got a Monkey Lord going up over here. And a Fat Boy. Nuke defense loading. Question is, will it be loaded in time? Yes, it will. There is one in the chamber. And on the northern side, we have an unloaded one. And this nuke is probably going to load first, as long as non-zero is not mass stalling. And holy cow, he's actually overflowing. Why? Why are you doing this to yourself? Actually, he has a lot of drones. And he has two T4s to reclaim. Three T4s to reclaim. No, he did one. That is why he was so full of mass. Right there. Anyway, he can build pretty much anything he wants. He should put all of his drones, but two of them, on this Megalith. And then send two drones to reclaim. And that would do wonders, I would think. These guys do not have Omni. They need the intel badly. The only advantage that the right has going for them is this big cloud of ASF that Damiani has managed to acquire. ASF are the bread and butter of the late game. They are the escorters and the deniers of the dreaded strap bomber, which has decided many, 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 many games. And here come the strap bombers now. There is one that's been built and a... Nope, that was an ASF. That was a spy plane, actually. Never mind. This has been paused. Damiani metering does not need to. <laughs> does not need to meter his income. He's pulling a thousand mass per tick off of reclaim. He has all of this crap to reclaim. Can build whatever he wants. He could actually feasibly build the dreaded penis of doom if he wanted to. <laughs> 
Although why you would build a Maver on this map, I don't know. Because you could just build multiple T3 artillery and they would do far better than the Maver would. All right, I'm gonna bump the speed back up on this since we're not seeing a whole lot of action at the moment. We do have a pair of TML up here. So gonna snipe off a couple of easy targets. Got some T3 mass extractors in reach with no TML. That is a terrible mistake. We got the two strap bombers engaging these oncoming Percivals. The Monkey Lord is going to join in. And here come the ASF. No! Don't lose your strut, bombers! We've got four still online. Three still online. And Damialni is apparently power stalling. Yes, he is producing air. That is never a good boat to be in. I just had a cast recently where a power stall literally killed someone. Strap bombers came in at exactly the moment the shields went down in a power stall and blew the ever-living daylights out of an ACU's face. Not the best day to have. And the TAC missiles keep raining down. Strategic launch detected. There it is. The sound that I've been waiting for. Where is it headed? I don't see the red on the ground. Ah, there it is. Right there. On the unloaded nuke defense. Although I'm not sure why exactly the nuke would be sent there. It's not the best location. I would have saved it for a different target. Or sent it up here because he could have obliterated purple. That is sad. But it did deny some mass to Damialni, which is what they really need to be worried about. We've got a Megalith from the left. It's gonna get hammered in the face by a lot of strap bombers and a monkey lord because double teaming is always better. Believe in the double tap. Damiani going to overextend with his ASF and take a couple of hits from Sam's. Megalith going to just plow these T2 point defense under and there's an answering Megalith taking a shot from a knee standing up to face the intruder. Fat boy assisting that. Oh, gonna lose the T3 power generators. That is bad. But there is now a huge mass donation on their doorstep that they can turn into whatever they want. So much eco on the left and so little built. You don't know what Blue is doing with all of this. He's basically generating more build power and more eco without greatly contributing to anything important. He's sitting on a double base, pulling 356 mass income, which is the high... No, Dami only has 360. It is the second highest mass income. And has he turned out a T4 yet? I don't think he's actually built anything. Kind of odd. Alrighty then. This Megalith is going to lazily head over in this direction, but I think they need to pull it back and keep it because there is another Megalith being built here which will murder the face off of this one, seeing as it's inside a shield and undamaged. And this one is slightly damaged. Ah, yes, there we go. Pulling back to base. We got T2 gunships dealing with the intruders. Rebuild and reclaim is the name of the game. One other thing about the nuke, the nuke erases all of the mass left over. So there is no reclaim where that nuke hit. That took a fairly large chunk out of the right hand side's assets. We do have a soul ripper up here. Not sure what he's gonna do with it though, because there is a whole lot, <clears throat> excuse me. There is a whole lot of anti-air everywhere. Don't think he could make good use of that, to be honest. Alrighty then. <laughs> Trying to build a proxy base, are you? Well, take that. It needs to separate these two SACUs, because they're currently taking fire. Uh, yeah, there we go. The area of effect on the UEF Rambo Com is actually quite good. We've got attack launch, probably aimed at that support commander. And he's not quite toast. Now he's toast. Rambo comms going to eliminate the threat, but broadswords galore, look at the damage on that. 
That is so ridiculous. This is why I love broadswords. People underestimate them constantly. Well, no. Not since the ASF just came in and train wrecked it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, ASF taking away all of our fun. We've got strap bombers up here on the top side. Maybe they will pick a target soon. I know not. Red actually looks like he has a competing number of ASF. Let's check here. Damiani totaling out at 154. Red, 100. So not quite enough, but the left side does have substantially more anti-air emplacements. So that is not a huge worry. Skull Razor is building everything his little heart desires as quickly as he desires it because he does have a very large eco now 474 mass income plus a little bit of reclaim he is throwing down tack launchers like a madman and building t2 stationary artillery because of course we need to turtle the middle who needs t4 and t3 spam we can just build more static emplacements No amount of TMD is going to save you. Well, enough could, but... Ah! Strat Bombers moving in, plus the Soul Ripper. I don't think those Strat Bombers are going to have any luck, though, because that is a shielded commander. Underneath a lot of T3 shields. Bug going to pull back. We got Sam's firing, and Bug is down. No, he's not. 11,000 health. He'll be down on the second pass. Need to run into the base and reclaim that sucker. You don't want to fly away. You want the reclaim to fall as close as it possibly can to you. We've got several trebuchets moving up. It's going to assist in laying down some fire on this fire base. Maybe that's why they call it a fire base. It's constantly under fire. Broadswords wandering in where they should not be. Near flak and ASF and all kinds of other Strategic nasty business. Detected. Nuke number three. Where are you headed this time, my friend? Directly for the Megalith. Oh, my word. <clears throat> that is going to be nasty. Oh, the ACU's right there. Run away. Oh, there was a nuke defense. Brilliant. That is a welcome surprise. Where was it? Ah, uh, ba da ba da ba da must have been that one. No, it couldn't have been. Am I blind? I must be blind. Ah, there it is. Right there. <clears throat> right in front of my face. Yes, I'm blind. That is the only answer. I'm impaired in one eye and cannot see out of the other. Is that a Novax? That is a Novax. Hey, buddy. And he's going to start melting that mass extractor. Harassment with Novaks is, 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 is the worst. Because you can't... You can build shields, but if your opponent is spamming Novaks, like you should always spam Novaks, you'd never, ever, ever just build one Novaks because that's stupid. If your opponent is spamming Novaks, that can actually get very nasty in a big hurry. Especially if you're Cybern, because Cybern shielding sucks. Terribly. You just, it, it doesn't work. So, yeah. Purple is about to be very annoyed. Maybe not terribly damaged yet, because there's only one Novax, but he will be annoyed. That is a certainty. We do have a Duke going up. This is an awesome combination. Oh, but there's already a Duke over here. I just saw the fire from that. Duke is very good at knocking down shields. And what happens is, if you build a Novax and a Duke, you can knock down the shields with the Duke and pre-target the Novax on all of the shield generators, and it will instantaneously zap all of the shield generators precisely. So, yeah, you kill off all of the shielding in your opponent's base, there's no shielding to recharge, and it makes the artillery that much more effective. Works very well. The Novax and artillery in tandem is a beautiful thing. So, yeah, it was targeting the area with the T3 artillery, which has been killed and damaged a power generator as well. That looked like it may have actually been a power fluctuation due to the shields being back up pretty much instantaneously. 
This is a problem. We have two monkey lords and a megalith. Where, ah, wow, that's overkill. Holy kashmoles. That's like swatting a gnat with a sledgehammer. A single brick? Loyalist? Percival? What was that? Probably a loyalist. Oh, mini fire. One monkey lord is down. This megalith hiding behind the hill. It's actually really good because the other megalith can't fire at it at the same time. Incoming strats. They are going for the blue commander. But once again, all the shields are going to screw up the works. Dang you, personal shield. Always messing up my plans. All right, megalith can now freely exchange fire over. Oh, that's actually bad. This megalith is hitting the rock. That megalith is not. How does that work? That's like the perfect body shield. Awesome. And tack launches, which are aimed at the ACU. Oh no, no. Oh, that was close, wow. Single strap bomber coming in for it. Not gonna work, my friend. <clears throat> and a Soul Ripper. Lazily headed around the southern side. I don't think it will succeed. You could actually feasibly slip by these Sams if... Is the vision radius? Yes, the vision radius is too small. If, and only if... Well, there's no radar. So that is a good thing. Things keep getting stranger and stranger. Where did the Soul Ripper go? It is hiding from me. Ah, there it is. Stuck on the map down there. Um, if you put a deceiver into a T2 transport and assist the Soul Ripper with the transport, or just follow along behind closely, uh, oh, that is, that is not going to end well. Uh, it's stopping out of reach of the Sam's. Good. Um, you can stealth your Soul Ripper. And that way you can pass right outside the vision radius of Sam's and not take hits. Megalus fleeing back towards the base. So many T4s in the center. My goodness. There's an air win there. Got ACUs going critical in the middle. SACUs, rather. We've got a Scathis going down in the middle. GC walking towards the battle. One megalith down. There's only one megalith guarding and one nearly built, but not not a whole lot of build power on that, so it may not be up in time. And we've got more attack missiles coming in. So many strat bombers. My goodness. Are they all target? Oh, <laughs> he's bombing out his own ASF. That is sad. And there are the broad swords hammering away at a harbinger. Let's go back down here. I heard, yeah, that was a, another ACU, SACU, going nuclear. Marching on the base. Megalith coming up just in time to return some fire. But I, oh, well, actually, we have a full health Megalith versus a one third health and a half health Monkey Lord. With the help of all of these broadswords and infinite strat bombers. So we may actually see this go down. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Gal uh, the Galactic Colossus is going to flee in terror. Knowing that it cannot go up against such an onslaught. Corporal Klinger is living up to his name. He is clinging to life by a thread evacuated the base just in time to not die. <clears throat> All right, Novax is still alive. What is our T3 artillery hitting? It is still targeted down here. There's enough shields in place now that this is actually a relatively secure position as long as the power stays up. Where is Mr. Novax? Here, Novax. Where did you go? That belonged to Tan. Should be able to see. I don't see it. Where did it go? That is very odd. All of the SACUs dying in here. 
Keeps making me think that I missed an ACU death. Ah, there it is. Right there. What are you doing over here? You should be over there. Another Rambo Com facing off against a single deadly Oblivion turret. Ah, no, there are two Ravagers. Ah, you could still do it. A little bit of zigzaggy, a little bit of dodge. You can take that on. The Scathus is what's worrying me. If that Scathus comes up, that is not going to be good for the right hand team. <clears throat> We're basically seeing land superiority versus air superiority. And to a certain extent, the air superiority wins, but you can't really go offensive with the air because of all of the SAMs and flak and everything else over here. So you're kind of stuck. It's basically air and static artillery. The second Duke is online now. And another SACU. Actually, that was down here. And up there. Um, so yeah, two Dukes online. That is going to drop shields pretty effectively. As long as he targets both in the same area, which he has. Looks like he is directly targeting Skull Razor, Strategic whose launch shield detected. is not looking super healthy. And there is nuke number four. Where is it going? Right over there. I do believe this nuke defense is going to catch it. Yes, it is. Just barely. Is it? Is it? Yes! Snag. Second ineffective nuke. Alrighty then. Looks like we have another artillery online up here somewhere. Let us look. Ah, yes, there it is. By the way, I believe the bug has been fixed that caused the T3 artillery to fire more efficiently with 3P gens instead of 4P gens. So you should start building 4P gens around your artillery now. That is just a little side note. And Strat Bombers killing off another SACU up there. These people are trying their dangdest to get proxy bases online, but it just does not work when there's that many Strat Bombers. And the Novax is merrily on his way back towards the base over here. Where he will end up, nobody knows. See, that Duke is going up well. We've lost some power over here. Skull Razor is running away from the non-shielded areas. Two Dukes with the area of effect that they have are very brutal versus shields. Dukes are excellent shield breakers. As you can see, kaboom! All of the shield generators are damaged terribly. One more shot, shields are going to start going down. Following shot, we're going to see some death and carnage. Maybe. No. Another shield drop. Incoming fire. And shield gen is down. So that is going to be a nail in the coffin for this southern base here. Dukes. I think the Seraphim artillery is probably... Oh my word. That was a lot of strat bombers, but not quite enough strat bombers. It looks like this tower... Oh! Oh! Oh, he should have kept walking. No. He had the Scathus too. Oh, that makes me sad. That makes me sad. There were like two or three stra... Oh, really? The thing just came online. There were like two or three strat bombers that came in after the main group. And that's what killed him. It looks like this tower actually took a hit. Tall structures in between you and the strat bombers are your friend because the strat bombs will hit that instead of you. So that kind of helps save him from the first pass. That and the shields and everything else. But then just he, he should have kept moving. It, it was sad. It was very sad. Okay, so it is now three versus three. A little bit more even footing. We have a gaping hole in the, in the bases over here. These two Dukes are now firing northwards. Did they kill the other artillery? Yes, they did. If they can eliminate this one, I think the right side team will have actually wrapped this up. Don't overextend because there's a lot of Sams over there. So many broadswords. 
and strat bombers. More strat bombers again. It looks like purple is building exclusively strat bombers now. Trying to get a count on how many strat bombers there were. Two, three, four, five, six, about 15 or so. Very good amount of strat bombers. And we're going to see a lot of waste there. Almost could say that not a bomb was dropped that day, but that would not be entirely truthful. There goes the artillery. The right side team is safe for now. We've got another Novax and a T3 artillery over there, but I think with these two Dukes, actually one of them died apparently. We're seeing this one being rebuilt. Yes, there was artillery fire hitting the ground over there. Possibly, shh, no, not strap bombers. I don't see any strap bomber wrecks, unless they've been reclaimed. But, that one duke was enough, nonetheless. And it was able to eliminate the threats. So we've got a megalith accompanied by a swarm of T3 mobile anti-air. That megalith needs to keep running because there's a GC coming up from behind. It needs to put distance in between it and that T4. Another SACU bites the dust. Da da do do do. Another one bites the dust. It's one of my favorite songs. I love singing it in relation to Subcom because it just fits so appropriately. Megalith moving up towards the north. Artillery hitting the only empty spot in the middle of that base. Brilliant targeting there. Whatever engineer is at the helm of that artillery deserves an award. GC punching a hole up the butt of this megalith. Ah, I'm gonna aim at the thorax now. <laughs> so many jokes to be made about this. Oh man. Strat Bomber's coming in to finish off the job. Megalith is not going to be able to punch all the way through. And it looks like we are down to Strat Bombers. There's a whole cloud of them up here. That is just ripe for an artillery shot. One artillery shot in the middle of this and like all of this would go kablooey. That is amazing. You do not build T3 P gens in a row. You just don't. That's not smart. Where is this aiming for? Is that aiming at a T2 radar? Really now? Really artillery? We know you have an award winning... Um... Crap. Just had a metal blank. <laughs> Uh, an award-winning engineer in charge of targeting. But here comes Strat Bombers from the rear. They're going to go directly after that. Why do you keep going directly after the commander? He has commander shield. Do you not see this? Although I do like the angle of approach. The angle of approach was beautiful. It's going to take down the shields, if nothing else. And another one bites the dust momentarily, if all of these Strat Bombers connect, which I think they will. And... Down she goes. ASF gonna come in and clean that up, I am sure. Not sure if that was intentional or not. Sometimes the strap bombers just kind of do their own thing. If a unit gets too close, they just auto-target, and then they end up in all sorts of weird places because they start circling, and then they see targets further and further and further away. And before you know it, your entire swarm of strap bombers is just over here in the enemy's base dying to sands for no reason, and you just... It, it's terrible. It makes you want to cry. It's just so sad to see all of that potential wasted. More strat bombers. Purple needs to save up more bombers at a time. That is what he needs to do. Because he just... He, he's not getting enough of them is the problem. If he saved up the two previous groups... Oh, that is beautiful. All of the Sams are going to waste their firing site. Oh, oh, oh no. No! Strat Bombers coming in. It's not going to be enough. They're going to drop some bombs, but it's not going to work. T3 Shield's going to intercept. No! If he would save up multiple groups and send them together, Red would be dead by now. Not a very well thought out attempt. Knowing how many shields the guy's got, knowing that he has commander shield, and still sending it, 
<laughs> Derp with the mass storage placement. I hate it when that happens. I do that all the time. You misclick, and the mass storage is like half step off. So you don't have the adjacency, but there's four things there, so sometimes you don't catch it. Strat Bomber's going to the north. Now the problem is, purple has far less to save him. So what we need is one Strat Bomber, one Strat Bomber, one Strat Bomber, one Strat Bomber, and the rest on the middle one. And it would kill all of those. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, two in the center and ground fire the two between these two P-Gens and then one on the end ones to finish them off. I think you would actually kill all of the power generators. It would be beautiful. And it would serve him right for building them all together. Ah, Scathus has been started but is not being finished. The ultimate siege tool for short distances, which actually this would be a beautiful distance to do it at because, ah, that's not his. What are we pinging here? Ah, strap bombers. We'll go back to that in a second. Strategic launch detected. There's his range. A nuke. Here comes the strap bombers. They're going to go after Akage, but he is going to dodge. ASF going to clean that up. Nuke coming towards the south, but I think it's going to bypass this nuke defense, which is going to shoot it down. No. Yeah, that one got it. There's one over here that got it. So, nuke. You are not welcome here. Kagi is going to live to fight another day. We do have a whole lot of strat bombers now. I don't this is a great quantity from orange as well as purple. But purple's got snagged on the off map. Rapid fire the clicks there, bud. You gotta get him away, you gotta get him away. Strategic launch detected. Another nuke. Going for the same spot. Gotta be determined, because if you keep firing your nukes at random locations, you're distributing your load amongst... Oh, no. No! Blue is down. I think we can officially say that's game. Because blue had all of the eco and everything. Blue had the biggest eco with the most stuff, but I think, honestly, he contributed the least to that game. Trying to get some artillery on building a lot of stuff at the front but it was all stationary stuff we actually saw some useful things from non-zero even though he had far less mass income he got a lot of mileage out of that Novax I don't know I don't think a T3 artillery ever came online for blue if it did it was only online for a little bit before it got killed Damiani's got his second one <coughs> excuse me Got a second one back online over here. Alrighty then. Megalith taking fire from these T3 point defense. But at this point, that is just observing the collapse of a team. Red does have so much stuff. So much anti air. My goodness. How many Sams does he have? I wanna know. I wanna know. Uh, 98 Sams in that base. That is redunculous. We've got strap bombers coming in on the southern side. Where are they headed? That was SACU, I think. Strap bombers headed probably for Damiani's commander. He's going to take some hits. 6,000 health. 3,000 health. No more strat bombers. All right, that was a death. Oh, holy cow, lag. Ah, help, my frame rate. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and the other death. Alrighty then. That was interesting, to say the least. I, that was the epitome of turtle play. Holy cow. The left side did well. And I am impressed with the amount of stuff that they built. They just didn't build the right stuff. Um, the right-hand team going for the air domination was very important. Building up the broadswords. The left-hand side was not sending enough flak and anti-air with their units. And their T4s just got slaughtered by T3 air with no opposition. And the right-hand side just ended up bringing it together a lot better 
even though less things were built and I think total less mass was invested. Damiani pulling 2.2 million score on 237,000 reclaim. So, very big numbers there. Actually, he may have reclaimed 217 for non-zero, who was the big eco on the other team. 114 for Klinger, and the other guy's not getting much. So a lot of reclaim as well. Anyway, good game to these guys. I was pretty good as far as gap goes. And if you guys don't want to see another gap game, you need to send me replays. That's all I got to say. <laughs> um, send me replays and I will cast your epic games. All right, that is going to wrap it up for me for this cast for this day. I will sign out here and I'll catch you guys in the next cast. As always, thank you so much for watching.